This, this training is on uh, the, cult, who is the question, who is the culture of competent counsel? And then it's a self-awareness, self-exploration, self-evaluation, which we should be doing, everybody should be doing anyway, uh, of bias, racism, stereotyping, prejudice, ethnicity, and cross-cultural communication. So uh, I just want to say that this is my backup technical uh, support system here. So um, uh, I'm going to make sure that it works. But before we, also before we start, do you have a piece of paper there, Susan? Can you give, just take a, give me a piece of paper? I wanted to do a little, a little experiment here first. If you could just pass me a piece of paper. Um, and I, what I'm going to do is, you have one there, Maggie, so just why don't you use a piece of your paper there. Okay. When we have more people, it's a little bit better. But Susan, and all the people in the back, I'll do it also. I want you to write down a cultural stereotype uh, or a racist statement or a cultural stereotype that applies to you. Not about some other group or gender, uh -huh. you know, so we're not throwing mud here. It, it's something no, that not. you've heard, something you've heard that, that, that applies to you or your race or your gender or your hair or <laughs> Any, anything. Anything. One? Only one? I have a No, no, no. You can put more than one. Put more than one. I'm going to put a car. I'm going to put some too. I'm going to do it too. And those watching at home, be anonymous. But a stereotype, a racist statement, a biased statement, an anti-cultural. Okay. Okay. You need to give it to me. We won't we don't know that this one's yours. I'll mix them up. So. I think it'll be pretty clear anyway. <laughs> Did you put more? I think one? mine will be very clear also. Uh, I think mine will be pretty clear. <laughs> All right. right. But if, if you have a, a big group, you know, you, you can get Oh, yeah, no, that that's would be why, you know, fun. we can talk about some. Okay. Blond, blondes are, uh, what is it? Ditzy. ditzy. Blondes are ditzy. Perfect. Of course, that's not a stereotype. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> no. Train yeah. her. Train this do. woman. It has nothing to do with being blonde. Okay? <laughs> wasps are bland. Bland and wasps. What Anglo-Saxon 
Protestants? Yes. Uh, wasps are bland and cold. Okay? Good. Yeah, this is a good one. This is mine. <laughs> You'll feel it. All men are dogs. <laughs> you, come on, you're, you're not even laughing now, right? I'm laughing. Okay. But that's the type of, you know, ridiculous thing. All men are this, all women. Yes. You know, oh, that, that type of generalization. <laughs> Uptight, snooty, entitled, petty, privileged, city person, biatch. Is that a biatch? No, that, they're just talking about Susan. They're not talking <laughs> oh, about yeah, people right. in general. No, you're talking maybe city people. <laughs> city, city people city. or downtown, that, yeah. that downtown Chelsea, that, that, that West Village, city. you know. Are uptight, snooty, entitled, preppy, privileged bitches, right? Okay. Compared to where, you know, if somebody who lives in, I mean, if, if somebody's watching in Wisconsin or even where we are out in eastern, eastern Long Island, or with people, what the people up here in the North Shore think about people from the South Shore. Oh, yeah, right. People from the North Shore mm -hmm. think about people from the Hamptons. <laughs> Lesbians are all masculine. <laughs> And then blondes are ditzy. Okay, so we can, I can, I can go through. If, that I, I was can baggies. Go, <laughs> I can twice. go through. Two, I, I did two. I did twice because I'm. I can go through. Sorry. Uh, pages and pages and pages and pages of, of these, right? And the, the common thread is that they all sound ridiculous, don't they? Yes, they do. They're all, they're all ridiculous. If I could sit here and had a group of 30 and I went through, I could, I could go through 40 of these. And I just did mm -hmm. this in the city for a program that had 17. Uh, counselors and social workers, and some were, were Hispanic, Puerto Rican, African American, Jewish, you know, men, women, gay, lesbian, so they had a good, had a good mix, but the bottom line was when we read them, they were all, they were all ridiculous, and they are. You can see how, how, how dumb it sounds when you listen to it like that. It's, 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 it does. When you, it's, right. when you put it that way, hmm. I don't feel that way about any of those. Right, no. When but, you put it that way. Right. But these are the types of generalizations that people have. And if you're not aware or self-aware of it, that they're there, which <laughs> most people aren't. Oh, I, I'm aware of my... Yeah, but we're, we're, we're a cell, you know. We're, oh, I'm we're aware. We're providing trained, skilled professionals, and we should be. But, but that's what this is about. Self-examination. And a lot of people are not like that. And actually, a lot of people in this field who think they know everything are not prepared to self-explore or self-evaluate because... We, you know, their attitude, and I see it because I do go up when I do the, offer the trainings and I hear, Mr. Rule, you know, we know I've been doing this a very long time. I know what I'm doing, you know. And I ask them questions about the changes in the DSM-5. They said, oh, is that, is that out? <laughs> you know, or are they out? And I ask them questions. I asked, I asked one, one who said, oh, I'm, I'm already a culture conference. I said, oh, I said, what's the difference between bias and racism? They didn't know. They didn't know. What's the difference between bias? What's the difference between bias and prejudice? Or racism and prejudice? They didn't know. They didn't know the difference. Okay, so that's what this is about. But you can see how ridiculous these statements are. We can put them in the garbage because we don't need them. Can I? Can I? So, cultural competency cannot occur without people confronting their own bias and prejudices. So, I made a little highlight there. If you want to be cultural com culturally competent, cultural competency cannot occur if you're not prepared to confront your own biases and prejudices. Historically, education and training in this area has remained 
in the, cog in the cognitive and objective domain preventing self-exploration. So you, have, you cannot do it without self-exploration. In order to achieve cultural competence, healthy professionals, that's us, must demonstrate the courage to examine themselves before they can hope to provide adequate services to a diverse population. And that's what this workshop is about. Now, when we were talking about, I have, a, I have a training on the spiritual principles of the 12 steps. Each step has a spiritual principle. But I see spiritual principles here. Courage, step four. Hope, step two. Counter. So I mean, this is what we're talking about, the courage. You, you can't even hope to provide adequate if you don't have the courage. I mean, it takes some guts to be able to do self-exploration. And it takes, it takes some courage to be a, a, an effective counselor. I mean, this is, you, you see miracles, but it, it, it's, it's, this is not a field for everyone. It's not for everyone. It seems that way. It's not for everyone. But it seems, you know what I just said. Yeah. Well, the thing is, and I teach this in another training, some counselors like to talk more than they like to listen, you know. Yeah. <laughs> they, they do more talking, I mean, than the patient. And at that, you know, you got to be a good listener. You know, you got to be able to, you know, let, be, be quiet, you know, and you kind of, I, sometimes I bite my jaw down because I want to say something, but I don't because they're saying something, and I never interrupt them. I let them get it out, and I may come back, okay, I heard what you said, you said, and I'm looking for discrepancies, and I'm looking for things that they said, or something, you know, that they might have missed to accentuate, but most of the time, you got to be a good listener to be a good counselor. That's why I say this feels not for everybody. So this is, this is, the, this is our official definition of it. Is that a culture, though? It's a special population, and there's, there's a little. Is it? Is it? It's a little and other status, and there's a little parentheses here that include and other statuses. But according to the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Administration's definition of recovery and what recovery is, and I can give you the printout on that. One of the one of the components of that is we must address trauma as counselors, and yes. a lot of counselors are afraid to do that because patients uh, tend to get upset when, uh, when um, explaining a, tra a past trauma. And I'm talking uh, sexual abuse, rape, uh, you know, child abuse, violence, you know, domestic violence, all, all these things tend to get emotional. And uh, some counselors are afraid of that, you know, because they think you're going to re-traumatize the person. But the research doesn't show that at all. It actually is a, it's very cathartic. And we have to address trauma. A lot of times, when you're working with a patient, you, they may not be open and honest with you during the intake about something traumatic that happened to them, but as, they, as you start to build the therapeutic alliance, the therapeutic relation, trust, they'll, they'll open up and tell you something that happened to them that, that is definitely related to their behavior, whether it's self-protecting, self-acting, or self-fulfilling prophecy. But with, with all of those things affect their behavior today. And if you don't address that and how they, how they can protect themselves and empowers them to protect themselves or protect that from never happening again, that really is a, a, is a breakthrough for them to realize that as patients. So we absolutely must address trauma in this field. And some people are afraid of it. But don't be afraid of it.
so this is just going to give you a little definition of those, those uh, different topics in the title. This is bias. A belief that one racial category is innately superior or inferior to another. Bias enacts prejudice in favor of or against one thing, person, or group compared with another using it using in a way considered to be unfair. Usually, sorry, usually in a way to be considered unfair. So, with bias is a belief that one group is better or not or better than the other. And that bias enacts a prejudice. Sometimes unconsciously. So the prejudice is based on the bias, which is uh, an unfair or unsubstantiated or undocumented or belief that one group is superior or inferior to another. You have it, you have it narrowed to racial, yes. but it would also be racial, gender, mm. all and the other this things, is where right? it, This is where it starts because it builds, it builds up from builds up from this initial bias. But yes, all, all of the above. I mean, gender and race are like gender comes even before race. Well, gender is the most popular because it's 50% and 50-50. Right? Yeah. I think it's 51%. 51% of the world is women and 49% is men. So it's the most common two biggest groups. And define discrimination here. Acting. Discrimination is acting out. It's the act. It's an action. It's an right? action, right? Acting on the basis of one's stereotypes and prejudices. Now, the prejudice is based on the bias. So there's a bias that, that entail that we, there's a prejudice which is also response, but the discrimination is actually acting out on that. Wow. Acting on the on the basis of one's stereotypes and prejudice, denying equality of treatment that people wish to have. Okay, so there's bias, and then there's this prejudice, emotional response, and then the discrimination is the acting out. When you just actually do, you discriminate. Like if you discriminate somebody who wants to rent an apartment, but you don't like them because of their culture, or their color, or their ethnicity, or whatever. I you probably know. will always have my bias, but I don't have to discriminate. No, on it. discrimination is that bad. basically what we're. Y yes, but uh, we, we it's have, like one of my character defects is um, bias against whatever. Okay, so we're going to we're going to explore uh, that a little bit more uh, as far but as the this self is, But this is the action. Yeah, th that's the action. If you uh, if, if if your bias, whatever it is, and, it, and you got an emotional response, right, and you act it out or prejudged a client based on that, then you don't belong in this field. Right. Okay? It's, it's right. an inability right. to be objective. Right. right. Yeah. Inability to be objective. But people who aren't in this field, who aren't doing this self-exploration, are taking a course like this, who are walking around, are discriminating all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, you know, they're not even going to take a look at it because they don't think there's anything wrong. Because that's what it, they, well, they should so, do this then. That's a learned behavior. So learned behavior probably came from their from from their parents. Yeah. So we're 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 an enlightened group, and we're doing self exploration and trying to educate ourselves by attending workshops like this. And I put a lot of work into these trainings, and 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 actually we should be getting cultural competence training as part of our you know counselor certification, social work degrees, you know human services. I have a master's in psychology. You know we're supposed to be doing this. That's good.
Okay, racism. I'm going to define that. The belief that race accounts for differences in human character and ability and that a particular race is superior to others. Racism entails prejudice, discrimination, and antagonism directed against someone of a different race based on the belief that one race is superior or that that race is inferior to my race. Or the so that's racism. And that can apply to gender as well. Because, you know, I, I really do believe that women can do anything a man can do. So. Right, so that's racism. Because it's, it's prejudice and discrimination based on race, that one's race is superior than another. Here's different groups. So you have this prejudice or this bias or this misconceived belief about the whole group based on some individual information that you have. Like I said in the example that I have, all men are dogs, all this or that, all those overgeneralizations. Prejudice entails reacting emotionally to an individual on the basis of one's feelings about the group or a whole. So this is, the prejudice is an emotional response which is based on the bias, which is untrue. But in an act of prejudice, that entails reacting emotionally, so there's an emotional response. And I got my little graphics. So little green fish. I, I spend oh, the poor green fish. I, I, spent, oh. I spent a lot of work on these to try on to, the make green them, fish. to make them, you know, mm -hmm. uh, relevant and creative and entertaining. It isn't easy being green. It isn't easy <laughs> being green, exactly. So a lot of time on weekends I've been coming up with these things. Ethnicity or ethnic groups. I asked this question, it's rhetorical, don't answer. How many ethnic groups are there? Don't answer. Just think about it. Because some people think of it, because there's a, some people think it's five, some people think it's six, some people think it's eight, and some people think it's as many as 15 or 16. Okay, 
Okay, ethnicity, the fact or state of belonging to a social group that has a common, shared, national or cultural traditions with regard to themselves as a uni unified group. Could be a million. Well, really? I don't think a million is a little bit high, but, uh, the, you know, there's some of the groups are here, but, um, you know, there's, I mean, rattle them off, there's, you know, Caucasians, Af African, uh, Asians, you know, but there's, you know, there's more to it than that. It's probably more like 12. Really? Yeah. Because then, you know, the, there's groups that are living in the mountains of Turkey which think they're, you know, they're, they're and the Indian American Indians think that they're, yeah. they're different, you know, they are, you know, they, they are, definitely have their own culture. But, you know, they, you know, but they're not Asian, but there's, you know, Inuits, the Eskimos, they call themselves Inuits. But then we get into, you know, Slavic, Ukrainian, Caucasians, and, and into Asia, and, uh, you know, then into the other groups. But, but who that group is, is defined by the people in that group. It's about, but that's why they'll say, they, yeah. they will say, we are our, you know. Yeah, we are the so-and-so. Yeah, we are the so-and-so, and, and proud and of it. Yeah, and you have, to rec you have to acknowledge that and recognize that. <laughs> You can't say, you know, no, no, you're not. You're white, you know. I mean, they'll say, no, we're not. We're Lithuanian, you know. Okay, so. Okay, what a competent council should know about the LGBT community. Now, I put this in here because uh, if you're dealing with this patient, just, just because it's a, it's a special population, uh, and then it's a topic that's relevant, and, and it, now it seems to be a little more relevant. It has always been relevant in the, in the therapy field. But I just got some additional information uh, to share with you about some issues related to this group. Okay, so when you're treating uh, a patient who's a member of the LGBT community, you want to be sure that you're able to provide a safe environment. You want to be informed on issues that may arise as barriers to treatment, which we're going to talk about in the next slide, that there, there are barriers to uh, members of this group coming into treatment. You've got to be aware of those so you can help uh, the patient overcome them. Uh, you have to ensure personal bias and conflicts do not affect services, which is part of the self-exploration, which are personal biases. You want to know the clinical and health issues uh, for this population, which I say in the next slide, because there are some special health issues that are related to this group. You want They have a common language, so you want to be aware that they speak a little bit their own language. And you want to provide professional and effective treatment. You should be able to, regardless of the group, but you want to make sure that you're able to be professional. So these are some specific clinical issues in this group. Um, coming out is an emotional um, 
turmoil. It's very, it can be ch very challenging for members of this group to either come out or have not come out, have they come out or want to come out, and have not come out or did come out or when did they come out. That's, that's an emotional sometimes uh, issue for them uh, that you've got to be aware of because uh, it's an issue for them. There's the homophobia, this, the internalized or externalized leads to uh, more suicide, self-injury, and self-medicating medication because they're, they're, they're afraid of this. They're afraid of uh, homophobic uh, being, uh, them being the, uh, the focus of someone else's homophobia. They're afraid of that. The, okay. What I learned in the, in the uh, race racism training is that the actual homophobia is often internalized. Yes. Have, yes. It's internalized. They have here. So they, they, it's a struggle. They have uh, religious and spirituality issues because some religions are, uh, are homophobic. <laughs> um, they have limited social contact sometimes because they stay within their community. Uh, they sometimes lead a double life, a secret life, and you have to be aware of that. That, that, that causes um, personality issues for them. Uh, and there's developmental issues, and of course there's a health issue here. When I did this workshop in the city uh, a couple of weeks ago, somebody asked me, one of the, the, the counselors asked me about that. I'm not assuming that he was uh, homosexual. But he said, because he, he said, why would I? He said, why would I have developmental issues? You know, almost like, why would I? Oh, yeah, Mr. Rule, why have I got? I got developmental issues like that, you know. So I explained to him that because of coming out and their internalized homophobia, that Individuals who are homosexual or gay, um, as they grow up, there's a personal personality conflict that they have. What should I do? That you know, they don't know, they don't understand it. So so they suppress it. And anyone who suppresses their emotional development or their emotions as they're developing as as a as a preteen and as an adolescent will have developmental issues that surround that. And he said. He, he, he said, you know what, that's right, you're absolutely right, Sid, you know. He got that right away. I mean, he was, he was a counselor, but he got that right away. So, so I think it helped him just to ask that question, but that's what that, that, that's what that means here. Does so that, it also mean, I, I'm thinking of transsexuals yes. and, and what they go through post-surgery. Yes. And it's almost like going, I mean, it's in a way it's kind of like going through the Ericksonian stages again. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have to completely adjust to living this yes. new life. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I don't hear it mentioned. And mm -hmm. I, and also the health issues around mm -hmm. that. I mean, all those surgeries and all that. Mm -hmm. There's got to be a lot of pain. Yes, There's yes, got to be pain so much recovery, involved yeah. in that. Sometimes they really don't, don't get the, they don't really uh, self-actualize their true identity to, to their, in their late 20s and 30s. So right. well, yeah, you're absolutely right about that. Uh, they don't become the person that they really feel that they were supposed to be all along right. uh, until, until later on in their 20s and 30s. But it, it's, it's traumatic as well because of the medical issues and surgery and pain and, and, and how they develop. Their developmental process is going to be completely different from yours or mine. So those are, those are all uh, great uh, things to be aware of.